Today was the first full day of the defense's case in the trial of George Zimmerman, who was charged with the second degree murder and the killing of Trayvon Martin. Zimmerman had pleaded not guilty, claiming self-defense. The prosecution rested its case on a Friday, and one of the prosecution's final witnesses before doing so was Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina Fulton. This is Ms. Fulton listening to part of a 911 recording in court and her reaction. I can't see him. I don't want to go out there. I don't know what's going on. So they're sending. Yes. Ma'am, that screaming or yelling, do you recognize that? Yes. And who do you recognize that to be, ma'am? Trayvon Benjamin Martin. Trayvon Martin's brother also testified about that very same recording. What parts of the recording do you recognize as your brother's voice? The yelling and the screaming. <clears throat> Had you ever heard Trayvon Martin yell or scream as the two of you were growing up? I've heard him yell, but not like that, but yes. The defense opened its case with several witnesses, including Zimmerman's uncle, saying the person yelling for help on that recording was George Zimmerman. The defense called the defendant's mother, Gladys Zimmerman. Do you know whose voice that was screaming in the background? Yes, sir. And whose voice was that? My son, George. And are you certain of that? Because he's my son. Today, the defense brought back to the stand the lead investigator of the case, Chris Serino, to testify as to the reaction of Trayvon Martin's father. Detective Serino played the reporting for Tracy Martin two days after his son's death and asked Martin if he recognized the voice. He looked away and under his breath, as I interpreted, said no. The defense also called to the stand Tracy Martin himself, but Mr. Martin's own testimony seemed to contradict Officer Serena. I think the chairs had wheels on them, and I kind of pushed away from the uh, away from the table and just kind of shook my head and said, "I can't tell." So your words were, "I can't tell." Some to that effect, but I never said um, no that that wasn't my son's voice. Mr. Martin said he listened to the tape again at the Sanford mayor's office and played it about 20 times and knew that it was, in fact, his son, Trayvon's voice. Joining me now is Karen DeSoto, criminal defense attorney, James Peterson, MSNBC contributor, director of African Studies and associate professor of English at Lehigh University, and Tim Wise, anti-racism educator and author of the book Dear White America, Letter to a New Minority. It was incredibly difficult to watch uh, Trayvon Martin's <coughs> father on the stand today. Uh, trying to hold it together, trying to keep his composure uh, under these conditions. And it, it's strange to end up so much time is being spent on this specific contesting this one piece of evidence. Whose voice is on the tape? Why is that so important to the case, Karen? Well, it's important because obviously the defense wants to prove that Zimmerman was not the aggressor, he didn't provoke the situation, and that he didn't create the situation. So if he was the one crying for help, obviously, you know, he wasn't the one who put himself in that situation. That's what they're trying to prove, and obviously whoever's crying for help is the person that's in a, a position of vulnerability. And if that's Zimmerman, obviously his self-defense is going to be a lot more credible. It, it strikes me as, as bizarre just watching this, the, the, this kind of contest over the plausibility of, of Trayvon Martin as essentially the aggressor in all of this, um, which, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, how do, how do we arrive at that? I mean, Trayvon Martin is the victim. He's, he's right. no longer with us. Not only can he not defend <clears throat> himself, but I think, and we, we can talk more about this, but this really cuts along racial lines. And, you know, when I was listening and watching uh, Tracy Martin today, I, I was unable to keep my composure because at the end of the day, if you've studied his face over the course of this trial, he has a, sort of been an examination of pain and loss and frustration in this particular case. He really reflects, I think, the way the black community feels about the Trayvon Martin in case right now. And let's be very honest. I mean, even if you looked at this evidence in the light most favorable to George Zimmerman, here's the reality. If George Zimmerman does not perceive Trayvon Martin as a threat right. in that from community, the beginning. from, from the, beginning. the beginning, he does not pursue right. him and no one knows who Trayvon is. He is still alive and George Zimmerman is just a pathetic wannabe cop. Right. But unfortunately, because he decided this young man didn't deserve to be in the community, he followed him and that is the process which led to all of this horrible action. And that is, action. that to me is the deep 
moral truth about the right. justice here, but is not the necessarily the legal right. truth right. that is salient, right? Because right. it is the case, the way this, the way the charges have been brought and the right. way that the case right. has been constructed, that is, if it turns out to be the case that the jurors believe that it was in fact George Zimmerman screaming help on that tape, right. that that can clear the bar for his for him to be acquitted. Well, in Florida, lesser included offenses are automatic, so there will be a charge right. for manslaughter. So explain what that means, lesser okay. included offense. Means. Lesser included offense is the manslaughter, the lesser offense of manslaughter, right. which is culpable negligence. So you really don't have to prove make depraved mind. Right. You don't have right. to do the depraved mind thing. So it's a little bit. So if they could prove negate his self defense, which would be saying that he created the situation and therefore he was negligent for putting themselves into that situation, then you would have an argument for the manslaughter right. charge. And I do believe that that's probably what the prosecution is going to at least focus on now because Indeed. second degree, I believe, is off the table. I think it's awful that we have to settle for that ultimately because the, pu the court of public opinion sees this case. They see that a kid went to a store to right. buy Skittles and iced tea right. to walk back home to his father's home and didn't make it back. Right. And we don't see anything else beyond that. Right. And so this criminal justice system, this justice system is not working out for well, folks to see it. What I think what's interesting about the way that we watch this case, uh, this trial, is the, the, the side we find ourselves on, the part <clears throat> of the trial that we end up rooting for. And I, let me tell you, my, uh, my friend circle includes a lot more defense attorneys than it does prosecutors. Right. Right. Um, I, I know I'm, I'm, my friends are, there's a lot more public defenders that's in my right. friend yeah, circle yeah. than there are prosecutors, and that's, that's just, right. that's a fact about me, but I think we are seeing an, an interesting reception on each side of the political aisle about right. where, where they stand with this, and I want to talk about that. I want to play some tape from Fox News right after we take this break.